and hisses at wall and new house for hours, owner finds hidden door behind it. We're finally moving into our new home, Bella. Emily ran her fingers through her cat's white, fluffy coat of fur. You're going to love your new room there. Emily started working as a senior analyst three years ago and had saved enough money to buy her first house. She had spent months going from one home to another with her realtor, but none of the properties impressed her. Some had too many rooms, while others had a small living room. After an exhausting search, Emily finally found the house of her dreams. It was perfect in size, had two bedrooms, a big living room, a spacey kitchen, and a green front yard. I want this house, she immediately told her realtor during their first visit. But don't you think this one is too old? It was probably built in the early 1900s, the realtor asked with a tinge of concern in his voice. I love old-looking houses. Plus, I think it is perfect for my needs. It's only going to be the two of us here, Bella and me, Emily explained. I understand, Emily, but the plumbing and electrical wiring in such old houses can give you a hard time. Are you sure about this? Yes. I'm sure. 100%. A few weeks later, Emily moved into her new house with Bella. At first, everything about the place seemed perfect until Bella started doing something unusual in the basement. Emily often found her feline friend staring and hissing at the basement wall, but she couldn't understand why. I know it might sound absurd coming from me, but you should call a priest to see what's going on in your house, Dr. Smith said nervously. Feeling confused, Emily called Bella's vet for a checkup. Dr. Smith, Bella has been acting strange since we moved into our new house. Could you please come in for a checkup? I will text you the address. Sure, Emily. Don't worry. Cats sometimes find it difficult to adjust to new surroundings, Dr. Smith replied. Please send me your address. I'll be there in an hour. Emily showed Dr. Smith the stairs leading to the basement because Bella had been sitting in front of the wall since morning. She hasn't eaten properly, nor is she playing with her favorite toy. She just sits here and hisses at this wall, Dr. Smith, Emily explained. Well, let me see what's wrong with her, Dr. Smith replied as he sat on his knees beside Bella and scratched her chin. Hey, hey, what happened to you? After scratching the cat's chin for a few seconds, Dr. Smith pulled his hand away when she opened her mouth to bite him. Looks like Bella is furious today. The vet gently ran his fingers through Bella's fur as he checked her vitals and looked for symptoms of illness. By the end of the quick checkup, the vet found nothing unusual. Emily, your cat is doing fine, so there's no need to worry about her health, he said while putting his stethoscope around his neck. I think there's something else you need to investigate. Really? Emily's brows furrowed. What is it? I know it might sound absurd coming from me, but you should call a priest to see what's going on in your house, Dr. Smith said nervously. You know, this house is pretty old, and cats can sense supernatural things. I hope you understand my point. Oh, Emily gasped. I never thought of it that way. Thank you, Doc, for the suggestion. Once the vet left, Emily returned to the basement and inspected the wall. She pressed her ear against it and knocked on it to check if it was hollow. Is this how they do it in movies? She asked herself as she kicked the wall with her right foot and punctured it. Oh, my God. She immediately pulled her foot out and peeked through the hole she had accidentally created in the wall. Meanwhile, Bella hissed at the wall again, and this time, Emily was sure there was something suspicious hidden behind the wall. Emily looked around and found a metal rod in the corner of the basement. She picked it up and punctured the fiber wall again, carving out enough space to allow her to pass through it. Wait, Bella, she helplessly tried to stop her cat, who jumped over the broken wall into the dark passageway. Come back. Feeling frightened and excited, Emily grabbed a flashlight and followed her cat inside the passageway. It led her to a wooden door. Should we go inside, she looked at Bella, who was staring at her with eyes wide open. Okay, let's see what's inside. Emily prayed for safety with one hand on her heart and the other on the doorknob. 
Then, she turned the doorknob and opened the door to unveil a safe the size of a room. It was dark and dusty, but Emily could see many unusual things inside it. Numerous artifacts of wood, gold, and silver sat in the dark, abandoned room. Besides that, the young girl found a small satin pouch full of gold coins. Oh, my God! This is unbelievable! Emily gasped in shock while looking at the coins in her palm. It seems like Bella has hit the jackpot. Emily exited the safe with Bella and told her best friend, Cynthia, about her unusual discovery. She was overwhelmed with mixed emotions and had no idea what to do with the treasure she had just found. Emily, you know you could travel the world after selling these artifacts and gold coins, Cynthia exclaimed through the phone. I am sure each artifact you found there must be worth thousands of dollars. Do you understand how much money you can make with all these things? But that's not right. Emily said. I mean, I don't own these items. Finders keepers, hun. Cynthia chuckled. Well, then everything I found belongs to Bella because she told me about the hidden safe, Emily replied while ruffling her cat's fur. After keeping the artifacts and coins with her for a few months, Emily eventually sold them, but she had a plan in mind. She did not want to keep the money to herself. Instead, she used it to buy a piece of land and set up an animal shelter called Bella's Wonderland. Years later, her animal shelter became home to thousands of homeless cats and dogs, and she felt at peace knowing she was doing something for the voiceless.